Hi, my name is Avery Maltz, and this is my presentation of Mice and Moss, an exploration of mutualism between Paromiscus and Bryophyta. I became interested in this topic during ecological fieldwork studying Paromiscus species when I noticed the abundance of bryophytes in the environment. I wondered if the Paromiscus leucopus and maniculatus species had any kind of relationship with the bryophytes in their habitat. While no one has specifically researched this relationship before, there has been much research to suggest that Paromiscus species use moss in their nest building, and they also use logs and rocks to orient themselves within their environment. Bryophytes tend to grow on logs, and they also reproduce through spore dispersal, which is triggered by wind or gentle agitation, such as a mouse running across a log. This study occurred in the nature trails behind Holyoke Community College in Holyoke, Massachusetts, for three consecutive nights from September 28th to 30th in 2021. We used a seven by seven small mammal trapping grid with two live traps at each station that were baited with peanut butter and oatmeal and some cotton batting in case the mice became cold overnight. Upon capture, we determined the species, age, sex, weight, and reproductive condition. New captures were marked with a tag and we also took a sample of salivary amylase to take back to the lab. I recorded the bryophyte data with the camera of my iPhone 12 on September 7th by taking pictures of each of the trapping sites and analyzing them to record the presence of bryophytes and the location of the bryophytes in relation to the landmarks in the area around the traps. I then used a chi-square test to analyze the data for the mouse captures and bryophyte occurrence and use Google Sheets and RStudio to generate the figures for this presentation. A total of 23 mice were caught across 14 stations, 10 of which had moss present and four of which had no moss. When moss was present, it was found on rocks, logs, and the bases of trees. Multiple captures of the same mouse at the same station were not counted in the data so as not to skew the results. The null hypothesis was that mice are just as likely to be trapped at stations with moss as they are at stations without moss. The alternative hypothesis, which I hoped that my data would support, was that mice are more likely to be caught at stations with moss. Figure one shows that we did have more mouse captures at stations where moss was present. However, in order to determine the probability that these results would occur and to test for statistical significance, I ran a chi-square test. After running the chi-square test, I found no significant relationship between mouse captures and moss presence at the trapping sites. The results of the test show that there was an 11.8% probability that these results would occur when doing this study, which unfortunately is higher than the 5% to support the alternative hypothesis. Although no statistically significant relationship was found between paromiscus and bryophyta, more than twice as many captures occurred at stations with moss than without. The hypothesis may not have been supported due to the small sample size of the study and the short temporal scale of data collection. I still feel that specifically for Paromiscus leucopus, further research in this area would be beneficial. Vegetation plays a very important role in P. leucopus distribution. P. leucopus prefers densely wooded areas with woody vegetation, low level habitats such as ravines, and herbaceous undergrowth. These are all prime habitats for bryophyte growth. And just in case you're wondering, the mouse pictured here was relaxed and content through the entire duration of the capture and the release. In the future, if a larger study were to be carried out over the course of years rather than days, a significant relationship between P. leucopus activity and bryophyte occurrence may be found. 
Further research may also include a comparison of moss present at trapping stations and P. leucopus home range in relation to the surrounding area. Research could also include observation of the route that P. leucopus takes after release from capture in relation to the mossy landmarks present at the station. Seasonality may also be an important variable to consider in future research. While this study was not able to support the hypothetical mutualistic relationship between mice and moss, it has begun an inquiry into a previously under-researched topic. Future researchers have the potential to find out if mutualism, or at least commensalism, may still be at play. I would like to acknowledge the following for their support of this project. Dr. Joseph Brucio for an excellent introduction to ecological fieldwork and the undergraduate research conference at UMass for providing this opportunity. Thank you so much for watching.